Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Cold weather has returned, but is it here to stay and will there be any snow? I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Japan the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 16th of January. And at the outset, cold air is moving down from the north across all parts of the UK. The white shading in western counties and in northern Scotland indicates snow showers. Now, as I run the animation in the short term, not a great deal changes. The snow showers mostly in the north and the west. It stays cold. But then through the second half of the week, a ridge of high pressure builds in from the Atlantic and milder air begins to return. According to this computer model run, it's the GFS00Z update. That transition starts to take place through Saturday. There's a band of rain pushing in from the Atlantic. The milder air is tucking in behind it. Now, initially, at least some of this rain could turn to sleet or snow for a time in the northern part of the United Kingdom. But the general theme is for temperatures to be rising. And into the early part of next week, it's a changeable picture. Rain, most likely in the northern half of the United Kingdom. High pressure to the south, generally keeping it dry there, though not completely dry on this particular sequence. A good deal of weather happening through the first week. So wintry to begin with, then milder later, if this is correct. Taking a look at the air temperature sequence associated with the same computer model run. Remember these values are at about 1500 meters above sea level. Blue shading at this time of year indicates a cold air mass and it's blue which is covering the UK there at the outset. Running through this, the blues stay in place for a while, the first few days, but then that's the milder air returning through the weekend from the Atlantic and 00 GMT Tuesday the 24th. The UK is under a mild air mass shown by the light greens and yellows. An Atlantic influence returning with high pressure to the south, as I suggested, maybe keeping things drier in southern and central regions. The two metre temperatures, so the ones down at the ground level associated with that, 15 GMT Tuesday the 17th, forecast maximums, threes or fours in southern and central counties, colder there in the north. All in all, though, not as cold as it was during the uh, December cold spell. Temperatures just a couple of degrees higher, generally. Moving forwards to Thursday the 19th, very similar. Fours or fives in the south, so perhaps just starting to edge up a fraction. Very cold there in the north. Also, on some nights, frosts will become widespread and sharp, maybe severe in some locations. Just as an example, 06 GMT, Friday the 20th, minus two, minus three in much of southern and central uh, parts of the UK. Cold of hope in places, minus five being shown there in North Wales and in the north. Also, I think on some nights in the Scottish glens, we could see temperatures dipping below minus 10 Celsius. So the frost risk will be varying depending on the extent of cloud cover, for example, but all in all, there will be quite a lot of frost around through the first few days at least. Then by Saturday, it's still quite chilly, but in Northern Ireland, the yellow shading indicates that it's starting to turn milder. Temperatures there reaching about eight degrees, four or fives in southern and central counties, twos or threes in Northern Britain. And finally, though, Monday the 23rd, it's now significantly milder, double figures returning to all air areas really, 12 Celsius fair in Northern Ireland. So by this point, the Atlantic has come back, the cold air has been pushed away into continental Europe, and as I say, it's back to business as usual, as it often is at least in the UK. The risk of snow, at the GFS animation showed it to be mostly in the north and in western coastal counties. Just worthwhile taking a look at the uh, animation showing snow depth based on data from the high resolution UK Met Office UKV model. It runs from Tuesday 00 GMT. At the outset, there's a little bit of snow being indicated over Northern Wales, parts of Northern England, so Pennines really, Northern Ireland and Scotland. This just runs for two days. 
And what we can see is the snow starting to build up in the favoured location. So Wales, northwestern England, maybe higher ground in the southwest for a time. And just at the end there, a suggestion perhaps of a little bit of snow in East Anglia, also in northeastern counties of England. The favoured locations though, very much the north, so Scotland in particular, Northern Ireland and coastal counties, so the west and maybe later on the east as well. But some of the most populated parts of the UK, for example, London, Birmingham, are staying snow free, if this is correct. But as ever, use these sorts of charts with a great deal of caution. I don't think it's going to be completely accurate, they never are, but I think that sequence gives a good indication of where snow cover is most likely through the first few days. Looking at precipitation more generally, so rain and snow, the accumulations for days 0 to 5. On the left, the output is from the European ECM model. On the right, it's the GFS. Quite a dry pitch on both of them, except in the southeast, where the GFS is showing values of between 20 and 30 millimetres. But most of that rain is really falling as rain, sleet or snow at the very beginning of a period. Uh, there's an area of low pressure pulls away through Monday. It's then mostly dry. Going forwards to the 0 to 10 days period, once again, a lot of dry weather to be found. The totals haven't really increased much apart from in the northwest where it's staying more changeable or unsettled. The Atlantic having more influence there, high pressure to the south, not really reaching into those parts of the UK if these two particular model runs are correct. So, how do the deterministics all stack up against each other towards the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, which the animation was using. High pressure starting to become more of a player. As I've just suggested there, rain remaining a greater risk in the far northwest. The Canadian model at the same time, similar. High pressure building up from the south the greatest chance of rain in the north. The German icon, a little bit different. High pressure further north, cold air, flirting still with southeastern Britain. That's indicating more of a continental influence as the high pressure builds northwards. But the general theme is a similar one for high pressure to start playing a bigger role. The European ECM, high pressure again, so the same story. And finally, the UK Met Office. There are some differences here. There's a band of rain pushing southwards. It's more changeable theme at this point at least. But even so, there's the area of high pressure. In the days which follow, it would probably be starting to play a bigger role, keeping things mainly settled, at least in the south of the United Kingdom, if it's correct. So. Taking them all together, differences in the details, but there's a strong signal for high pressure to start being a bigger factor in the UK's weather by the end of the first week. What about week two? Does that theme continue or is it back to an unsettled period? Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. So it's ensemble data as ever at this range, just looking at the trends and probabilities. Air mass temperatures across the top at the start of the second week are above a 30 year norm according to most of the runs. The thick purple line there, the ensemble mean, well above the thick black line. So it's offering good support for milder upper level air to have returned by the, uh, by the start of week two. Later on, an increasing number of runs dip downwards and the ensemble mean finishes close to that 30 year average. Along the bottom, Rainfall, not too many spikes there at all through week two. Quite a dry picture, but maybe a little bit of rain around, but all in all, a good deal of dry weather. Anything which does fall from the sky, though, by then is likely to be rain. The snow row values stay very low, reaching a maximum of four out of 33. Two meter temperatures for London. These are quite interesting. Light green co dominates the columns, so 6 to 10 Celsius, average to quite mild, but there is still a significant amount of dark green and it increases later on. 
Bowser runs going for cold conditions at the surface, so perhaps a significant amount of the GFS, GEFS run to bring in high pressure up from the south. Air mass temperatures at the 850 HPA level are staying close to or above the average, but it could be somewhat colder down at the surface due to the calm conditions, maybe some clear nights, Apache uh, frost risk uh, through that second week. It's, there's a lot of uncertainty. I'll look at temperatures a little bit later. Going up to Manchester, the uh, 850 HPA temperature profile, very, very similar to the London one. Even the number of rain spikes isn't that much greater than, than it was on the London plot. So there is a chance of some rain, but quite dry and probably rather settled through week two. The two meter temperature data table, similar to the London one, light greens, but then the amount of dark green does increase towards the end of the second week. Glasgow, some differences here, but not, not great this week. Air temperatures there at the 850 HPA level, above the 30 year average through the first few days, they dip later on. There are more rain spikes than there were for the locations further south, but not a huge number. So even here in the northwest, a good chance of a reasonable amount of dry days. I think more incursions from the Atlantic, more spells of rain pushing in, but all in all, not wet when averaged out over the entire week. The two meter temperature data table for Glasgow, similar sort of trend really to the other two. A lot of light green, but that decreases, and the dark green, the colder runs also uh, pick up. So those are the ones going for between one and five Celsius. Very, very consistent with sort of general themes between the London, Manchester, and Glasgow plots. Here's the 10 day GEFS mean surface level pressure generated by averaging out all of the runs. In the ensemble, it's for Thursday the 26th of January. High pressure building up from south, so having a lot of influence as I've been emphasizing, just for chance of it staying more unsettled in the far north. And the ECM ensemble shows something very similar. High pressure again. And the data table showing the GEFS surface level pressure forecasts for from all of the individual runs going forward, so rather than just at 10 days ahead, this is looking, um, showing each day individually for the second week here. And there's a huge amount of orange, so runs going for 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. Even some of the red there, those are the runs going for over 1,040 millibars. I've, I've mentioned in several updates recently that there has been a weak signal for pressure to build this time, it's a strong one. There's a lot of support here for high pressure to be much more influential through the second week. York, being a fairly central location, is very, very representative here, I think, of a general picture because we've got that high pressure building up from the south. So if anything, if, if I'd chosen London as a data table location, there would probably be even more orange and red showing up. What about two meter temperatures? As I've been saying, there's quite a lot of uncertainty about this because it really depends on how far northwards that high pressure builds. Will it be cutting off the mild southwesterly flow or not? And the posted stamp plot here shows the forecast maximum temperatures on the 28th of January from all of the individual runs within the GEFS. It's pick and mix, I think. C close to average, rather cold and rather mild scenarios, all in fairly even numbers. You can maybe freeze a video and count them out, but it would be very, very difficult to make a call based on this to go mild or cold. So it's probably best to say close to average is the most likely scenario because there are not many very mild runs in there. Likewise, there aren't any very cold ones, but there are some which go quite cold and some which go quite mild. Sudden stratospheric warming. Is an SSW on the way? Here's the weekly update. Well, the latest uh, plots from the GEFS model 
indicate that the stratospheric polar vortex will be weaken, weakening significantly towards the end of January. And the one or two runs in there, which just about go for a full reversal of zonal winds at 60 degrees north, which would indicate a major SSW. But most of them don't. And if we just look at the temperatures at uh, the same atmospheric level, 10 HPA, HPA up in the stratosphere, towards the end there, a number of them are showing warming, a fairly significant amount, but not a huge amount. As an SSW can see temperatures climbing by about 50 Celsius in two or three days. What we see in here is some of the runs going from about minus 50 up to about minus 35, just over a two or three day period there towards the end. Is an SSW imminent? Based on this data, a major SSW is not imminent, but there are growing indications of the stratospheric polar vortex weakening towards the end of January and into the early part of February. What that means is perhaps the chance of high pressure blocking will be increasing through February and in turn, it, what that would mean for the weather, it would be very dependent upon whether high pressure blocks uh, built, but if they move far enough north, if they become established far enough north, it leads to a greater chance of cold weather moving in from the east or down from the Arctic right across the UK. Something to keep an eye on. But back to the summary for the next two weeks. Week one, it's cold and wintry through the first few days. Frost will be widespread and sharp. Also, there is a risk of snow showers, particularly in the north and the west, although it could increase in eastern coastal counties for a time too. Later on, a band of cloud and rain pushes in from the Atlantic. It possibly will be preceded by sleet or snow in the north, but milder air follows on from the west. There is uncertainty though about how much temperatures will increase in the south, a chance of it staying somewhat colder there. Week two, high pressure has a good deal of influence, so it should often be dry, particularly in the southern half of the UK. The signal for temperatures is very weak. Some of the computer model runs are showing colder than average, some are showing milder, and some are showing very close to the average. All in all though, probably not far off the norm is the best way of summarizing it. Cloud amounts will determine the risk of frost, but with high pressure building up from the south, the chance of frost is probably higher in the southern half of the UK, more of an Atlantic influence in the north, keeping things cloudier, damper, and with a greater chance of rain. So, uh, there we have it. A cold and wintry start with sleet or snow showers in places. The likelihood is that milder air will be returning from the west later on through week one. Uncertainty though about whether or not high pressure building up from the south will keep things somewhat colder in the southern half of the United Kingdom or not as we go through week two. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.